We're talking wrestling with Frank Pavich and Spearfish and just completed a, a great event, the Black Hills Nationals. Yeah, Dwight, it was a great event. Thanks for uh, doing the pre-interview with us and the post-interview too. And, and uh, it was the best Black Hills Nationals we've had in 17 years. Theoretically, this was our 18th year. But uh, since the COVID year last year, we had to postpone it into this year. And, and uh, they came out of the woodwork. They came from coast to coast and even the Gulf Coast and everywhere in between. So it was really kind of neat to see about 28 states were represented. Uh, we had wrestlers from Hawaii. We had wrestlers from Alaska. You know, so, so it, was pretty, it was pretty neat. Um, we had uh, um, just, a, just a wonderful event that we spread out over two days. Uh, we utilized Spearfish High School that worked out well as a venue. Um, so, so we have some definite options between the college and the high school to take our event to. And, and uh, everybody that I talked to after the match were, were very happy. You know, um, we, had, we had some challenges up front from honoring everybody's uh, entry fee from last year. So we had to kind of do everything by hand. And it, and it uh, you know, it gave us a little bit of a trip up that first day. But we managed it just fine, and everything went off without a hitch. And record numbers. Record numbers, yeah. We had we had over 1,300 registered wrestlers, and I think our final number was like 11, 1185 or something. We always have a certain amount of no-shows, so we, we had a little over 100 and some no-shows. Uh, they register for whatever reason. They don't show up. They're they're registered, but they just don't show up. So, but we still had almost 1,200 wrestlers there. So it was it was just a fantastic year. I think the most we've ever had was uh, you know right at that right at that uh, um, thousand 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 fifty mark. So so you know we're growing every year. Um, a lot of people were hungry to get out and wrestle this year, and uh, we provided them a, a, a great event. So they could get out and uh, and uh, and do that. You know, they were just ecstatic to be there. All ages, including a lot of kids. Absolutely. You know, we start our weight groups at six and under and graduate every two years up to uh, um, high school division. High school is 15 through 18, and then we have a seniors division, which is senior men from 19 to 29, and then masters men is 30 plus. Those were great, great divisions i mean there was some masters and and seniors it was standing room only and i think we had about 70 or 80 seniors and masters competing <laughs> and that's one of the most entertaining divisions you can watch you know watch these guys get back out and test themselves to see where they're at some of them got it some of them don't <laughs> but it's it's all uh, it's all a lot of fun to watch you know a lot of men and women leave sports participation behind when we're out of high school and college. But what is it with wrestling? Let me just digress for just a second. You just mentioned women. We had such a great girls and women's division this year, and next year it's going to be even better. We're going to try to, we're going to, try to uh, turn the Black Hills Nationals into a qualifier for our state for the Disney Duels. And, and for several other states for their state teams, North Dakota, Wyoming, uh, uh, Montana, South Dakota. So we're really going to look for that female division to really grow exponentially. Um, the Olympic trials have just gone on. We have a lot of women uh, uh, that are representing the United States in the Olympics this year. You know, we know who the guys are going to be. It was a great weekend to watch um, uh, Olympic trial wrestling. And you're, you're going to see women's wrestling throughout the nation become a force of the future, and we're really embracing it at Black Hills Nationals. But back to your question, is what is it with wrestling? I really think it's a family. It's a family. It, wrestling um, has given some type of character to each wrestler, whatever that is. I mean, it, it, for me, it filled a void. You know, I wasn't a great wrestler, but, but my dad died when I was a freshman in high school. And, and uh, uh, you know, God bless my mom. She made sure that I had the opportunity to play sports. And, and, and wrestling filled that void for me. Um, it was a, uh, uh, and that, I think that's why I do what I do, because it's really a passion. It's really a labor of love. I saw one of my boys wrestle Division One and go through college and get an education. And now he's a head wrestling coach at Fossil Ridge High School in Fort Collins, Colorado. So he's given back to the sport. All of us that have been involved with wrestling really have taken something positive from it and want to give something positive back to it. And, uh, you know, me, my whole staff at Black Hills Nationals, Paul Soriano, 
Joel Martin, who you interviewed with me before. Um, one person that I should have mentioned before uh, was Karen Wilson from the AAU. She's my national AAU liaison. She does a wonderful job. She's been with us for 17 years and does such a fantastic job. You know, do it, she's one of those nuts and bolts type people that just make sure registrations are there, make sure their AAU cards are there. You know, a lot of people say, why do I have to buy an AAU card? Well, it's the insurance umbrella that we that we are under. I mean, it's a $5 million insurance umbrella, and, and that's what you're getting with your AAU membership. So, so um, you know, those are the moving parts behind the scenes that, you know, people really don't think of. Um, other staff people, uh, Cody Powers, um, uh, Darwin and Kay Latham, Josh Paris, um, Patsy and Jerry Hood, they always run our hospitality room, do a wonderful job. My wife, Kit, and my staff here uh, at, at the American Family Insurance Office, um, they we all take the day off because it's our community service event for American Family Insurance, and uh, we all take the day. They all take stock in this. You know, our, our, a lot of our friends. Kit runs the admissions and 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 makes sure that you know everything goes from there to admissions and flows to admissions appropriately. It's a big animal, and there's a lot of moving parts. And there's a lot of people that, that come out, you know, to help with it. You know, table workers, referees, um, it, it just goes on and on. Security people. I mean, it just, there's no end to it. And, and each person has their job. I'm a former U.S. Marine. Paul's for a form, former Army. So we understand military chain of command, and we have everything kind of dialed in to each person's job, and this is your responsibility. And it works. We give back to a lot of kids, a lot of in a lot of capacities, a lot of ways, from uh, camps, additional tournaments, you know, a lot of a lot of different things. One thing we're spinning off: we always do a camp in June. Our camp's coming up June seventh. Uh, our camp clinician is Roger Kish. Um, he's from North Dakota State University. He's the head head coach there. I've known Roger for a lot of years. I'm a Big Twelve referee, and Roger's one of the referees. On, on my rotation. I try to stick with Big 12 schools. Well, you know, whatever that Big 12 school may be, I reach out to the coaching staff and see if they would be interested in coming to the Black Hills. I've not gotten turned down yet, you know, in, in, you know for, uh, since 1994. We've, been, we've, held, we've held a lot of coaches here and uh, um, doing camps, and uh, it's just been great. We're spinning off into, a, uh, into an, another Black Hills Nationals event, and this is going to become a crown jewel. And, and, and just you wait and see. Within three years, this is going to be a massive 40-50 team tournament that will be held in Deadwood. We're going to start it this year. It's going to be at the Deadwood Mountain Grand. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a, uh, just a one-day dual meet format tournament. And we're going to start it with either eight or 12 teams. We're going to start it small. It's going to be a, it's going to be a loss leader this year. We're going to test it out. We're going to work the bugs out and then we're gonna grow it from there. But uh, ultimately, we'll wrestle all the preliminary rounds in, in, at Deadwood Mountain Grand, possibly the Deadwood Lodge in their conference rooms, and uh, wrestle pool wrestling, and, and the final day, wrestle, wrestle a, uh, whoever wins their pools goes into an eight bracket team format, and uh, winners advance, losers go back into the to loser bracket, you're going to be guaranteed a lot of matches, but uh, we're going to we're going to place uh, teams one to four with medals, you know, gold, silver, bronze, and copper, you know, for fourth. Uh, team trophies for first through third, and a uh, pla plaque for for fourth. So mm -hmm. it, it, it'll it'll turn out to be a huge event, just like Black Hills Nationals. I can see the vision on it. I can see the you know the nuts and bolts that are going to go into it. Um, our uh, staffs are working on it right now as far as uh, in the planning stages. It's going to be July 13th. There's not, that's not that far away. So, so we were just up there um, uh, doing measurements and everything else and getting, making sure we had enough electricity. But Devon Mountain Grand's great. It's an event center, and, and they're just eager eager to have it and support a new event. It'll be a huge event in Deadwood. And eventually my vision is to go with the finals um, um, third and fourth place and, and, and first and second place at uh, Outlaw Square in Deadwood. Wow. But in between the matches, mm -hmm. have two high, uh, um, highly sought after, highly talented college wrestlers 
focus on a, on a thing called the beat the street match. You know, so they, they can come to Deadwood, South Dakota and compete as kind of a highlighter event. And uh, um, I will get it done. I promise you, I'll get it done. So, Is registration open for that? It will be open after um, probably, uh, I'd say, April 30th. So we're still working out the bugs and everything. I have a lot of feelers out. We're not going to have any problem fielding eight to twelve teams, you know. So we're going to we're going to shut it off at at twelve teams uh, this year. And j like I said, just test the water. You know, we're working on an, in uncharted territory, seeing how the venue works. You know, it's an experiment, just like anything, just like Black Hills Nationals was, you know, eighteen years ago. Um, uh, but it's we we have the staff in place and we have the infrastructure in place and uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna create another another event via Black Hills Nationals. And Frank, you being a Big Twelve referee, how did you get into that? You know, uh, I I got into refereeing. Uh, I coached, got out of the Marine Corps in 1987, and I coached in the Lead Dewitt system for for several years. And uh, I just figured coaching really wasn't the path I wanted to go down to, but I wanted to stay involved in wrestling. I was invited to become an official. And I did that, and I really enjoyed that. And I started um, officiating in 1988 and uh, officiated for about 10 years. And my son was coming up the ranks, mm -hmm. and he was starting to go to, you know, take an interest in wrestling. He had no interest to wrestle whatsoever, and I wasn't going to force him. But once he started getting an interest in wrestling, uh, myself and Paul Soriano started taking him and Paul's son and a bunch of other their 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 uh, buddies that wrestled. Let's we took them all over the country to wrestle, and and by doing that, we got our foot in the door to become officials. Paul and I both were were talented officials, and and we you know we had something to offer. So by networking there, it just kind of led me to bigger things. Uh, I recognized in high school that my son was going to go wrestle in college. I didn't know which division that would be, and and but I knew he was going to wrestle in college. So I and in 2000, 2002, 2001, I started going into the college ranks. My first my first tournament that I did was a Dickinson State tournament, and then I did Shadron State State duels, and and uh, just started started trickling in. And over time, I got into the Vegas Open, which I'm now the head official for Vegas. I'm the one that, that uh, hires all the referees to come in, the head official for the Cowboy Open for the University of Wyoming, and, and I'm part of the Big 12 crew. Uh, I've done the Division One's, been selected and do it several times, and, and uh, I've done the Division Two's. Uh, the only level of college wrestling really that I haven't done is a Division Three because I never they're not in my they're not in my radar. I, I never see Division Three schools very seldom, but uh, um, so that's kind of how I got in. I had a lot of mentors along the way that that helped me get there. For Dwight, I've had a lot of mentors along the way that have helped me get to different levels and different layers of officiating. I've had the desire to get there. I've had the ability to travel. Um, um, you know, so I, I had kind of the perfect storm to get me um, in the in, in the radar for tournament directors and, and everything else and assigners. So so with that being said, you know, now it's my turn to become the mentor. And uh, so I'm the, I'm the mentorship chairman for the Intercollegiate Wrestling Officials Association, the ICWA. It's a it's an officials association that is reaches from coast to coast in the United States, and, and I'm the one that, that helps new officials and old officials, uh, uh, vet seasoned veterans, get working and get visible. So if we have opportunities, um, I, we have evaluators, we have assigners, and, and then we have some mentorship funding that I have a budget to work with, and I'm able to, I'm able to fund individuals going to different tournaments or different duels, um, um, and it takes the burden off the school and, and puts the experience to that, you know, gives the experience to that referee, and, and it's a win-win situation because the school doesn't have to, to pay the freight. They already have their officials hired, so a lot of times officials can't break into officiating because there's no opportunities to break into. We've taken that totally out of the equation, and we're creating opportunities because we're paying. We're, we're putting the bill. We're, we're putting, putting them to work and making sure they're being paid, you know, to do this, to spend time. It takes a lot of time. You know, from your family, from 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 your work, you know, from your from your just your daily life, you know, you have to be real committed, and an official, <laughs> you have to have tough skin too. I mean, you're you know, um, 
I could say a couple things, but since we're on TV, I won't. So, but uh, you have to you have to be a tough individual. Well, even a little league baseball umpire has to have a little tough skin. Yes, they do. Sometimes more more that way than the other. Refing little little kids sometimes is a lot tougher than refing high school and college kids because mom and dad are the coaches and mom and dad are emotional because they have an emotional connection to little Johnny or little Susie. And, and that's that it becomes a very personal thing there. You know, when, when you when you transfer that over to a coaching staff, you know, it's still, you know, the coaches still spend a lot of time with the with the kids, but they're it's not their blood. So so, you know, you you see a lot of different changes and a lot of different dynamics there. But uh, um, so in a nutshell, you know, that's I, I've had a love for the sport. I had a desire to get to the top level. I achieved the top level of college wrestling. I want to keep giving back in the capacity that I can, um, um, you know, as, as long as I can. You know, everybody asks me when I'm going to retire. I don't know. That's a. I don't know. I tell my wife every year I'm going to retire. <laughs> she says for the last, you know, five, six years, I've heard this every single year. And it's kind of a standing joke in the household. But uh, as long as I can still call a good match and I can move, and uh, um, I want to, I want to keep giving back in that capacity. But when I, once I do hang up my whistle as a college referee, I still want to be involved. I still want to, you know, be involved with some type of, uh, some type of wrestling, whatever that may be, whether it's, whether it's evaluating or, or you know, whatever, uh, encouraging young officials to, to, to. Uh, Take on the whistle. You know we're really lacking in the official in the officiating ranks. You know it's it's not just wrestling; it's every sport. Um, it takes a lot of time commitment, and it takes a lot of it, you know it takes a lot of time to learn your craft. It's an art just like anything else. It's a job just like anything else, and you have to learn it, and you have to learn it inside and out. And 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 sometimes it's hard to be on that mat. You know, or on that basketball court, or on that football field, and you're hearing, you know, you're hearing the crowd chip at you and everything else. Once you understand, and once you get some experience behind you, that just kind of muffles out, and you're focused on your your job. You're focused on what you got to do. And in wrestling, you're seeing red, and you're seeing green. You're seeing a wrestler with a red leg band on. And you're seeing a wrestler with a green leg band on. And whoever scores the most points is going to win. I don't learn a lot of names. You can throw a bunch of names on me, at me right now. There are the top wrestlers. I know a few, but the top wrestlers in the country. I make it a habit not to learn it just because I don't want to know. Yeah. I just I just want to go out and officiate. I just want to go out and do my job. Well, Frank, we appreciate you taking time to visit about you, about wrestling, your insight in the in the in the sport, and uh, if people want to get in touch about the future events. Uh, what's the best way to do that? Uh, they can go to bhnationals.com and go to our board and look at the future events that are coming. Um, um, our, our camp is posted now. Coming soon will be the Deadwood Duels, the Black Hills Nationals Deadwood Duels. Um, um, so they can go there. They can always call me, 641-0587. Be happy to entertain a phone call. Um, you know, we do have scholarship programs available that are on our website as well. If a kid needs to go to camp, if a kid needs to go to tournament, um, it's going to take an essay from them telling us who, what, when, where, why, and how. And, uh, um, you know, we're just not going to give them money to go. We want them to have some skin in the game, too. And I encourage I encourage young kids to do that. We, we've scholarshiped and we've funded a lot of kids going to tournaments, going, getting scholarships, going to college after wrestling. I've mentioned this before. Our mission at the Black Hills Nationals is to take that wrestler that's the small peewee wrestler, turn him into a junior high wrestler, turn that junior high wrestler into a high school wrestler, and turn that high school wrestler into a college ref wrestler if that's what they should so desire. The desire is going to be up to them. Yeah. You know, we can't have the desire for them, but we do have some, some funding for them. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Dwight. Always appreciate you guys, and you guys do a wonderful job with what you do, and always like catching Black Hills TV.